family. It's Mrs. Hermsmeyer coming at you from my daughter Rindy's play fort. Um, she's getting a little sick of us, I think, uh, day after day after day with mom and dad. So this is her little private time, her little getaway that I'm invading right now. Um, I hope you're all doing well. All of us teachers miss our students so very, very much. So hello to all of my students. I hope you are well and healthy and abiding by social distancing rules. Keep yourself and your family safe. Um, I wanted to share a poem with you by Wendell Berry. It's a poem I turn to when I am needing a little bit of outdoors, but maybe am not able to be outdoors. Um, Right now, trails and things are closed, so it's a little bit more difficult to get our fill of nature right now. Um, and then following this video, I'm gonna share um, a video poem created by a couple of friends of mine that I watch on occasion when I'm missing the woods of my hometown in Northern California and need a little bit of peace of mind. So, um, I've had lots of time for reading lately. I hope you are getting some reading done too. Um, this poem is called The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. And I hope you can find some grace and peace in the world despite our isolation. And yes, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Take care. A very long time ago, there were no groves, because everywhere was a grove, with no roads to bisect, and no people to erect stones and fences and bridges. The trees were very, very young and had much living ahead of them. The enormity of their lifespan loomed in woolly mists around them. So they stretched out their root fingers and wrapped them around each other's, intertwining and holding very tight. The ferns found pockets of root fingers where they could nestle in, and the moss stretched itself out over the soil, and everything became very soft. The trees grew and made patterns of light and dark on the ground, and the vines swirled in to trace the patterns. Spotted spiders moved back and forth and up and down, making nets to catch the mist, and the mist would linger on the nets in drops that cupped the light. It was very quiet all the time because the trees needed to focus on their lives. It is not easy to grow so much for so long. Some trees became tired and lay down on the soft ground. Others leaned and rested their tops on one another. And when one tree had to stop, another would grow out of it and reach very high into the gray and gold sky. Growing is forever, they whispered. <laughs> 